Okay guys, I'm back with an update on my challenge to get a random product up to 100K in product sales. Uh, and so this is day 11 in the challenge since I started the challenge. Um, and you know, I've, I've had some interesting experiences along the way, but you know, uh, let me talk about kind of my current challenge right now. Something that was stressing me out yesterday and kind of going into today, and that's the first big disaster uh, in this product launch, which was I went out to uh, get an email out to my email list yesterday and, and try to uh, you know send a quick update to them. And, and this, this email list is absolutely critical to my product launch plan, uh, like I'm going to explain in a little bit. Uh, it, it's, it's essential to my whole seven-figure product launches process. It's not the only thing, uh, but email is going to drive like, you know, I estimate like 80% of conversions for any product launch um, that, you know, that, follow, that follows this, this kind of system. Uh, email is important. So if you don't have a base for 80% of your sales, you're really going to struggle. So you need email for that. So I went in to just send a regular update to my email subscribers that I've been building up over the last several months and you know even before that and I go out there to send them like a quick update yesterday uh, and then I actually happened to use uh, the email marketing software I use is called system.io and, and so I, I go in there I write my, I'm trying to write my email and then it actually tells me like uh, this, do, uh, this domain is not verified or something like that. Like you need to verify this domain and, and beep, I'm not actually able to uh, contact my email list. Uh, somehow, you know, the tech providers are telling me that uh, the domain I was using which is still valid. I still use that domain and the email list I'm using, I'm not actually able to reach them anymore because somehow overnight, seemingly they've changed some things under my feet and I'm flat on my back and I got no way to contact my people. And I kind of need to get this email out because I have a plan uh, that I'm gonna be sending updates to this email list like the entire launch is hanging <laughs> on this email list <laughs> like, And now you know, I'm, I'm getting news that I can't actually send emails out. So needless to say I got pretty stressed and um, I looked on their website and I found a bunch of like stuff that just wasn't very helpful didn't address uh, my problem at all. And I actually ended up sending them an email kind of out of desperation, like, hey, what's going on? I'm seeing this new thing. I've never seen this before. What's, what are you guys doing? What? <laughs> um, and you know, it's, it's like something I talked about in a recent video that I did talking about the simplicity of funnels. If you can have a funnel that's really simple where you don't have too much technology because these platforms are going to trip you up, especially if you're a beginner, like this is much, much more uh, going to be a, a, a problem uh, because the platforms can be complex to navigate. So the simpler you keep it, I believe, the better you're going to be, especially if you're starting out. Now, as you scale, you can afford to bring in team members to handle certain aspects of your tech. So you can be more elaborate with your setup for like your tech, right? Um, but this problem can be resolved uh, because fortunately, you know, I, I got some data back from these guys today and they walked me through like in their email that they have actually changed things up on their platform. And so they've made some changes, which unfortunately mean that the setup that I had set up long back years ago that has been working for me uh, somehow is not nearly as valid as it should be. So they don't actually allow me to uh, contact my contacts through this platform anymore unless I go through and verify uh, my
my setup some more. Now that's gonna take time and everything, but at least I have some helpful information from these guys. I, like I know, okay, I can understand, um, but of course you'd think they would send you a notification about this big change in their platform. Uh, instead, you know, this is pretty much the first time I'm finding out about this and um, if they hadn't responded to me, then I wouldn't even know what's going on or, you know, what changes have happened or have not happened on the platform. So if you are going out and you are starting your own product launch, uh, keep in mind such things happen. You're going to run into disasters like that. Hopefully it's not right when you want to, um, you know, have the big sale for your product. But understand such things, anticipate them, plan in advance, and, and, and never have deadlines that are too tight to, like, don't, don't um, choreograph your launch uh, so tightly that you don't have space in there to allow mishaps like this to happen. Uh, you know, plan things out in a way where uh, you can you can take some disasters happening. Like in my case, this is not a, a big deal breaker. Like I'm in a good place because I'm I'm way out from actually trying to sell my products. So now let me go through like kind of like the the strategy and what I'm working on doing right now. And so what I'm really doing right now with this email list, what I'm trying to get, I only have. 200 and something, maybe 270 subscribers. Uh, but I'm not really trying to get uh, to sell the book to these guys, like not right away. And, and certainly not like that's not the audience that's going to like power like 100K in, 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 in product sales for this. Like that's just a very small audience. So what I'm really looking to do is I want to uh, basically, I'm going to be working on giving away some free copies of my book to uh, my email list, right? This is a book that I'm going to sell for $20. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it away for free to some of the guys on my email list. Um, and that, that way I'm going to get, hopefully I'm going to get some feedback from uh, some of the guys on my email list. Uh, and so I, that's why I really needed to... Um, get some uh, conversations going and uh, contact my people and uh, and then over the weeks that I, uh, you know, over the coming weeks, I'm going to be, uh, the strategy is I'm going to be giving the book away to some of the guys on my email list and then I'm going to get some feedback. This is, if you will, it's kind of like product testing, uh, but uh, more so just to kind of get um, feedback from people like, okay, what do they think? really help them in the book if anything uh what did they think now they might give me ideas about what they thought might be improved but the book is already written i'm not gonna rewrite it like this is pretty much the random product element of it is pretty much uh that like i'm not rewriting this book it's launching as is so whatever feedback i'm getting is really more so for informative purposes just to let me know where the market is and what their impressions are of the book but i'm not rewriting the book it's done it's done it's re it's written i'm gonna sell it as is uh because the ideas are my ideas you know and 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 uh in that sense it's a faithful representation of you know my process and what i was thinking about when i was writing the book based on my experiences so i'm not gonna like retarget the book uh just because People think like, oh, it should have talked about this. Like, you know, as an expert, I got a certain process and the book is really just a documentation of that. Uh, but product testing in this case is really more just to get information from the market. What are their impressions of the book? Uh, what stood out to them? What was helpful to them? Maybe what was not so helpful to them? Just so I understand the strengths and weaknesses of my book as perceived by the market. Uh, so then I have, I, I have, so that way, when I write a sales letter for the book in the future, I can highlight the strengths, what people really liked, and I can address the uh, perceived weaknesses. Like if people say, oh, this is a really short book, 
or oh, this book uh, didn't tell me how to do SES more or should have talked more about this or that, then you know, I can address that in, uh, in my sales letters and things like that. Uh, but being in touch with my email list is gonna be critical because you know, that's where I'm gonna offer this book to uh, my people for free. Uh, and uh, those are the, the people that basically are gonna get uh, first crack at uh, taking the book for a spin. Uh, and then, and then what I actually do is after the month is up and I've gotten hopefully some feedback in the month of June, uh, then in the month of July and onwards, I'll actually be out there launching the book and you know now trying to get book sales and I'll actually be selling it, not just to my email list, but looking to bring new subscribers um, because you're not gonna get to 100K in book sales with like an email list of 200 and uh, something uh, subscribers um, you know like it's essential to keep growing your email list so that's a process that you guys can use as well get some feedback from early users get some people that you trust a tight-knit circle of people that are subscribers to your content now if you have a big email list you can actually just send this out not to everyone but send it out to maybe a thousand people and, and get them to try out your, your, your product. Like if it's an e-commerce product, like you're trying out a new fashion item or you're trying out a new piece of uh, sports equipment, uh, email it out to like a thousand people and say, hey guys, uh, would you like to test my latest product? Collect feedback from those thousand people, however many of them signed up. Uh, you don't even need a thousand, like even 50 people or 20 or 30 uh, and then work with them over a month see how they like it collect testimonials collect feedback from them and then now you can actually write a really good sales letter based on the feedback that they give you like okay this product is really great like it works really well with um, you know it's it's helped me uh, in these ways and then if they say the product is good, but you know, if it's like a uh, protein bar or something like, but the taste is takes some getting used to, then you can address that in your, in your sales letter. Now, if you're still in product development, you can actually uh, adjust your product. If it's a big enough thing, like, you know, if it's a food item and people are saying, um, like it's not sweet enough like it's just a little bit bitter that's something that you can address in your uh, product development like you can go look at the formulation again and talk with your product people and say well can you guys make this product taste uh, more consumer friendly because people you know maybe it's for kids and they need something a little bit sweeter that's something that they can absolutely address um but um if it's a product where you know you've already you know you you can't really um, change it up then you can address that just in yourself let and say well you know this equipment um, or maybe it's a piece of equipment that turns out to be really heavy and you know that people are concerned about it you can say well this equipment could be lighter uh, but we chose to make it heavier because it's safer for you guys because it doesn't move around that much. Like you can actually address that and explain why things are the way they are in your product. Now, don't make some lie up. I'm just saying like, but you can address like, um, you know, like if you look at the, I'm, I'm a guitar player, right? And if you look at Gibson uh, guitars, uh, you look at the Les Paul guitar, it tends to be heavy. And a lot of beginner guitar players complain about it, but there's a reason why that type of guitar is heavy the way it is. And it's because that's how it produces a better sound than most other guitars out there. So that's like the reasoning behind it, which a beginner uh, product buyer won't be aware of. But so that's where now, if you are writing the copy for, for your product, you need to be able to um, explain the the, uh, the decisions behind why you made the product in the way and the trade-offs that you are you are dealing with uh, so you can address those kinds of things so that's how you that's how you deal with that is you gotta be able to have a conversation here from the market from your product testers their impressions and then you process them 
and you figure out what things are valid for you to change in your product and what things you're not gonna change in your product. Like for Gibson, I wouldn't want them uh, changing the Les Paul to make it lighter. Cause like, you know, I like the sound. <laughs> I like this, like this is, that's the way to make that product. Don't make it lighter and then give us a crappy sound. Like we don't want that. Uh, keep it heavy, even if beginners are gonna not buy, uh, but that's because us people that are appreciate the sound, that's what we like. And you know, a lot of people are gonna buy um, those guitars just because of based on, on the sound quality. Um, so address what can be, fix what can be fixed, uh, but so some things that might be seen as negatives, you can't, you can't fix because they give you something else that's essential for your product. So that's kind of uh, the way to, to think about it for your own uh, product launch. And then for me in the month of July, which is like uh, a month from now, that's kind of when I'm going to now be taking that feedback and actually um, putting up a good sales page and starting to drive traffic to this sales page and starting to actually sell and try to get sales of the book. Uh, so that's kind of where I am, guys. Remember, also, you're going to have disasters along the way, but those disasters really don't matter. You just got to address them. Um, you, you can fix pretty much any problem that happens in your product launch. Don't be um, disappointed when you start running into problems early in a product launch. That just happens. That happens to everybody. That happens in any product launch. Uh, and uh, I could tell you stories, <laughs> you know, that's, that's just the way it is, uh, you know, uh, come back into the ring, there's a long way to go, and you gotta get that product launched, and you gotta get that product to sell. So if you need some ideas to brainstorm, just to get more product sales, you can uh, book a free consult call with me, free brainstorm call, link will be in the description. I also have some free resources that you can grab. And again, uh, the links will be in the description.